Welcome back to NE 630 Nuclear uh, Reactor Theory. So uh, last time we talked about the derivation of the single speed diffusion equation. <coughs> and this equation is the one of the main uh, tools for designing nuclear reactors. Of course, it's not the single velocity or the uh, single energy or the monoenergetic uh, diffusion equation. Usually when we solve this equation, in uh, uh, reactor calculations, for example, usually we use what we call multi-group diffusion equations. So uh, we, di we uh, divide the energy of the neutrons or energies of the neutrons up to groups. So you remember the chi-squared and the 1 over 8 and the Maxwellian distribution. We are pretty much interested in the, let's say, in the thermal energy region. So we divide those Maxwellian distribution up to hundreds of groups so that we will have fine resolution. Then in the AB thermal region, maybe we have 50s or something like this. In the fast region, we have 10 groups or 15 groups or, or whatever. And then we have the same diffusion equation, but we'll have groups. So it will have group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4, up to whatever. Some, some of the people will solve it for a couple of hundred. Some of the people will solve it for 1,000. And of course, you solve it using finite difference scheme and so on. We are not going to uh, study this. Uh, advanced topic in this lecture or in this semester, during this semester. If you were registered with Professor Bill Don for uh, nuclear reactor analysis one, I think, uh, you would be able to study the diffusion equation. So um, now, <coughs> after we derived the diffusion equation and we stated last time that there is three conditions for the validity of the diffusion equation. Can anybody remember what's the, uh, give me an, what's the, the three, three assumptions? Isotropic scattering, this is one. Absorption is, Absorption is negligible compared to scattering. This is two. The slowly varying flux. And we stated that for the diffusion equation, uh, the flux is not slowly varying at the, at the, interf at the uh, uh, what do you say, the, uh, the what? The boundaries, yes, thank you. And the boundary. And for this reason, we use the diffusion of the transport approximation, which is the one that we stated last time, that you have your x here, and this is the flux in the core, and this is the x boundary. Zero is here, and we said that we will extrapolate this here. So this is lambda extrapolated, and this is phi at x boundary. So this is the flux at x boundary. And this is lambda extrapolated. And d phi by dx at x boundary, it, the, the, the slope at x boundary at this point here is nothing more than y over x, which will be um, phi at x boundary divided by lambda extrapolated. And again, lambda extrapolated is nothing more than um, phi divided by d phi by dx, all x evaluated at x p. So, and we said <coughs> that lambda extrapolated, the extrapolated distance is nearly 0.7 lambda transport. And lambda transport is nothing more than well, 1 over three sigma transport. And sigma transport is uh, sigma absorption minus three sigma scattering. So if you remember this. And the third one, of course, if you, if you are near a farewell element, so the absorption is no longer negligible compared to the scattering. So you have to do, again, you have to do some uh, tricks here to modify the diffusion equation. The third one, uh, also the absorption near uh, control rods is very high compared to the uh, scattering near the uh, control rods. The, and also, the scattering is not isotropic near, near the boundaries and near surfaces. If you are near or near fuel also, it's not scatter, it's not uh, isotropic. So <coughs> now, let's write the diffusion equation again. So it will be 1 over V d phi by dt equal to What's the first term? Source plus minus 
Los. So this is the diffu <coughs> diffusion equation. So we will solve this diffusion equation for, first of all, we'll solve it for non-multiplying media. Non-multiplying medium. What do we mean by non-multiplying medium? <coughs> we mean a medium that does not have efficient uh, fissile material. Okay, so let's assume that we have a medium like water and there is a source inside the water for neutrons that emit neutrons. So this is called non-multiplying medium, meaning multiplying is the multiplication for the neutrons due to the fission, fission reaction, fission chain reaction. So if you have a medium that does not have any fissile material, we call it non-multiplying medium. So we'll solve it first for non-multiplying medium. The first case, we will have a plane isotropic source in infinite homogeneous medium. So plane isotropic source in infinite homogeneous medium. So guys, if you, if you knew the technique that we will be using here, you will be able to solve the homework problems and you will also be able to solve lots of differential equation problems. So I want you to just focus with me about, because this is physics and also mathematics. So just focus with me on what I will be doing here. And what we'll be doing, we'll be repeating day and night and uh, every, every week at least we'll be repeating this. But just <coughs> bear with me. So let's assume that we have infinite medium. Infinite medium your x-axis goes to negative infinity and plus infinity, y-axis goes to plus infinity, negative infinity, and z-axis goes to plus infinity, negative infinity. Now, <coughs> in this infinite medium, <coughs> excuse me, we'll assume that it is infinite medium, and we'll be talking that our medium is just one dimension. So we will be just talking about the x-axis, infinite medium x-axis. And at the center of the x-axis, so this is x equal to zero, and here is x <coughs> goes to um, infinity, and this way x goes to negative infinity. And at the center of this uh, infinite medium, we have a source plane. So a plane like, like this goes at x equals zero, and it emit the source emit it's s not neutron <coughs> per centimeter square. It's not neutrons per centimeter square per second. Neutron per centimeter square per second. <coughs> so, because this, the system is not multiplying, so what's here equal to zero? Sigma F. No fission, so non multiplying. And we assume that we are not interested in the transient. So if you have a source, you are not assume we are not interested in the transient, we will look for the steady state solution. So steady state means dV by dt equal to zero. So this is a steady state. So at the very early beginning when there's no source, <coughs> no neutrons, then you will put the source, what will happen? flash of neutrons, then there is a transient solution when you just at t equal to zero minus, then at t equal to zero plus you will have some neutrons, then after some time you will have a uniform, not a uniform, a steady state solution. I don't know what the shape of the flux will be in the medium, but this is what I am looking for. So <coughs> you will have uh, dV by dt equal to zero, <coughs> so with time the flux is constant. 
now zero equal to efficient source is zero minus sigma absorption and because we are talking about one dimension so this will be d2 phi by dx square okay guys so what's the source the source is here at x equal to zero so I can write the source <coughs> in this in this form here is not multiplied by the Dirac delta function x minus x naught <coughs> how many of you know what what does mean this Dirac delta function and so the Dirac delta function if this is the x axis this is f of x sorry and this is x and you have at x equal to x naught <coughs> you have a single spike that goes to infinity this is called the rack delta function of x minus x naught so the function is infinite at x equal to x naught but zero everywhere else And when you integrate your direct delta function of x minus x naught dx from negative infinity to infinity, from negative infinity to infinity, the integration will be zero everywhere except at this point. This will give you one. So this is the properties <coughs> of the direct delta function. So now my equation will be d d to phi by dx square minus sigma absorption phi equal to S naught. So this is the equation that we will be solving in one dimension for a plane source. So what's this equation? For differential equations, when you solve differential equation, you will have the differential equation equal to something. So if this something is equal to zero, we will call the differential equation homogeneous differential equation. If you have Q of x here, so we will call it uh, inhomogeneous differential equation. So now, if you have inhomogeneous differential equation, usually the, the solution will be phi, the total solution will be the complementary function plus phi, the particular integral. How to get the complementary function? So this is second order differential equation with constant coefficient. So your flux, so this, this will be in the form um, d2y by dx square, and here is a plus, uh, let's say, b dy by dx plus c equal to zero. This is, the, this is the homogeneous. So the solution for y here gives you the complementary function. So the solution for the homogeneous equation gives you the complementary function. How to get the solution? You will write this as A, and you write something called characteristic equation. So every d by dx, you will remove it and put m. So here is m, but d by dx is raised to the second power. So this will be m squared plus b, and this is d by dx. So I will, I will remove it, and I, I, I write m plus c equal to zero. Then you will solve this linear al algebraic equation, second order, you will get m equal to m1 and m2, and your solution will be y complementary function equal to some constant. I, I put here a and b, so let me put c1 e to the power of m1x plus c2 e to the power of m2x. <coughs> so this is the solution for the complementary function. The particular integral is a little bit difficult. Yes, because you have, you have to know what type of function and then you, you will do lot, lots of complicated stuff to get the particular integral. So, and you have to know how many, how many uh, boundary conditions to solve this uh, uh, equation here. You need two boundary conditions to be able to uh, exactly calculate what's C1 and C2. Yes, so <coughs> for the particular integral, we don't have a problem. For the complementary function, we will still have problem. So there is a trick that we can implement so that we will get the particular integral 
without without going to the normal mathematical way and I'll show you what's the trick and this trick we'll be using uh, through the rest of this semester <coughs> and also you can use it in lots of other uh, courses, engineering courses that, that also will have a source at certain position or, or, or as a fixed place uh, in, in, in the space. So now let's solve the particular, the complementary function first. So the complementary function, if you follow this, it will give you phi complementary function or let's call it phi uh, and phi will be, so let's, let's first do arrange, rearrange the equation. So d phi is square by d two square phi by dx square multiplied by d minus sigma absorption phi equal to zero. I can divide by d both sides here, and this will give me d two phi <coughs> by dx square minus one over l square multiplied by phi equal to zero. So what's l? L is equal to d over over sigma absorption under the square root. Well, th this, this parameter here in reactor physics, we call it the diffusion length. So this is diffusion coefficient, diffusion coefficient, and this is the absorption cross-section, and this is diffusion length. Diffusion length and the square of it is called diffusion area. And, and if you do statistical analysis or statistics and get the average the, view, the, the average length, it is it is this one. So the neutron will start here, will get a collision, whatever here, 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 then get absorbed here. So if this is our average, the average um, we call it crow flight distance. Crow flight distance means you are like a crow. So you do not follow the, the collisions that the neutron make until it finally absorbs. So the crew flight distance from the point where you started to the point where you get absorbed, this is the average distance. This average, if you average this distance and you take one six of R, this will give you L. So one six of the crew flight distance <coughs> till absorption, this is called L. L square is called diffusion area because it is area, diffusion area. And if you look at the at the uh, um, values for the uh, for the uh, d and and uh, sigma, the d is represented in what? Or let's let's talk about sigma. Sigma is what? Units. One bare centimeter and diffusion. Yeah. So if you look at diffusion, diffusion is is what d is equal to one over three sigma scattering. So sigma scattering is one over centimeter. So d is what d centimeter. So centimeter and centimeter again. So centimeter square under the square root, it will be centimeter, so L is centimeter. And this is why L square is centimeter square. So now we knew that this is, this is the equation that we will be solving in one dimension, irrespective of what type of source you have in the medium. I don't talk about source right now. I define the source by defining the delta function. Yes? So this is just a single source, unit source at x equal to zero, goes to infinity, it's a plane, goes to infinity in x direction. But this is the equation for the neutron diffusion in non-multiplying medii, and I do not have anything else except it's a steady state, non-multiplying medii in the x direction, one, di one dimension case. So this is a general equation. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I have a question about the source. Is it going at a rate? Huh? Like with time, it's constantly spitting out new yeah, neutrons? Yeah, it's spitting constantly okay. neutrons. Every second it spits S0. Okay. Bare unit area. So S0 bare unit area. Okay. So, so now, when we solve this equation here, we will get the solution is phi equal to uh, phi equal to A. So 
look at look at the technique I just told you. So it is m square minus one over l square. Yes. Applied over over phi equal to zero, so you will solve this equation. So what's m? Plus or minus one over l. Yes. One over the square root of l square is one over l. So you'll have 1 over L plus and 1 over L minus. So this will be A e to the power of X over L plus B e to the power of minus X over L. So this is, this is the solution. Now, for X greater than 0, if we are talking about this, this half of the infinite, infinite one-dimensional medium, the flux should be finite at infinity. It should not be infinity. Yes? Your flux at infinity should not be infinity. Maybe zero, but it should not be infinity. So this equation for x greater than zero, what, what component of this equation will go to infinity if the x goes to infinity? The first, the first one. The first one. So I, I have to suppress the first term. Yes? Otherwise, my flux will be infinite at infinity and I do not want the flux to be infinite. The flux should be finite. Just think about the physics. S source in the center. Do you think it will spit neutrons up to infinity constantly at infinity? No. Do you think there is something at infinity like a wall that, that prevents neutrons from penetrating and bile up the neutrons until it become infinite? No. So neutrons sh there should be zero. So I have to cancel A and then the fl flux will be just B e to the power of x over L. So this is the solution. Now, let's think a little bit about the complementary the particular integral. I told you I do not know what's to how to use the complementary function. So we'll do a trick. What's the trick that we will be doing is the following. <coughs> what happened? I will leave the diagram. And I will talk to you guys here. What happened if we took um, something like a cylinder like this and it has some dimension, let's say, something like this. And it has some dimension here, x and x, delta x here and delta x here. So I can calculate what's the flux or the neutron current going in this direction and what's the neutron current going in this direction. But I'm interested in the current in the positive x direction. Yes? So I knew what, what, what is the current. So if I start shrinking delta x, okay, and shrink it, shrink, shrink, shrink it, until I make delta x zero, what do you think the current will be? will be the source because the current is number of neutron per centimeter square per second and the source is emitting uniformly neutrons in this direction and in this direction is so not neutron per centimeter square per second so at the limit that x goes to zero j will be s naught over two why because it's an infinite source and it emits S naught, so half of it will go this way, half of it will go this way. So, how to write this in mathematical form? What's the current? D, d phi by dx, yes, is equal to what? Negative d, d phi by dx is equal to what? is not over t. This is the current, yes? The current is what? J is what? From the last, last, uh, J is equal to negative d grad phi. So negative d grad phi at x equal to zero equal to S naught over 2. So where is, where, is, where is the flux? 
the flux is here. So what's d phi by dx at x equal to zero? It is equal to what? B multiplied by zero. Yes? Negative B divided by L multiplied by e to the power of zero. Yes? Because differentiate here with respect to x, this will give you negative one over L multiplied by b e to the power of minus x over l, but when x equal to zero, this term will be equal to e to the power of zero is one. Is e to the power of zero is one. So this will be negative b over l. So now I can substitute here with d phi by dx. I will take d phi by dx and substitute here. So this will give me d. d phi by dl is negative b over l equal to s naught over 2. So what's b now? The constant b? s naught l over 2d. So that's it. So I have one constant. I want to calculate this one constant. I got it from this, and this is called source condition. Do you now know now what's the trick that we will be using every time? We will have the diffusion equation. Then we will use the source condition to give us to give us what? To give us one of the unknowns. Because we have how many unknowns in this equation? Two uh, two unknowns. Yes? We need two conditions to define those two unknowns. What's the first condition that we use? Huh? No, no, no. The first, uh, yeah, yes, is the infinite, infinite boundary. At infinite boundary, the flux should go to zero. Then, now, the second, the second uh, condition that we use is the source condition. So now, <coughs> now the flux will be equal to what now? S naught divided by 2D multiplied by L e to the power of minus X over L. But look now, if we do the same situation for the other half of the problem, it will be exactly the same. Yes? If we say the flux at negative infinity should equal to zero, so we will, elim we will eliminate which one? The second one. And then we will do the source again, source condition. And this will give us similar equation, but with positive instead of negative. Yes? So in this case, we will use the absolute value divided by L to make both at the same equation. You will use it like this. OK, guys? Did you understand? Let's move step forward, make it a little bit difficult. So I know everybody loves difficulty. So let's solve the plain isotropic source if somebody read the isotropic source and it is a plain it goes for by if it is isotropic yes but this is a plane that has infinite dimension in y so technically speaking you said I do not emit anything in Y because it has infinity. Nothing will survive Y. Infinite in Z, nothing will survive Z. Finite in X, so it will be emitted from just one dimension. And because it is isotropic, so half of it will come this way, half of it will come this way. <coughs> so now I want to show you the, the, the solution here. So I have from negative A to A, and I have infinite in all direction but X, and the plane is here at X equal to zero. Now, guys, <coughs> excuse me. When you solve, you will solve the same equation, exactly the same. D2 phi by dx squared minus 1 over L 
square phi equal to zero. And now it is the matter of choosing the equation. I told you that usually when we solve the complementary function, we got a e to the power of x over l, b e to the power of minus x over l. You agree? I need everybody to open his eyes, look at the equation, open his mind, because this is very important. Lots of students usually when I teach or taught this class before has this problem. When we talk about infinite medium, it is easier for us because the condition, the flux will go to infinity at what? At infinity. So it is easier to pick up e to the power of x, e to the power of minus x, which is the hyperbolic uh, functions. This is a hyperbolic functions. But for finite system like this, the flux should go to zero at, at x equal to a and minus a. Those functions will not work. So I have to pick up another function. So those other function will be, sorry, this is the exponential, not the hyperbolic. This is the exponential function. I have to solve and I will pick up the sinh of x over l, the hyperbolic now, plus b cosh x over l. Somebody will say, how did you pick up this? How did you pick up this? Very easy. When you, from mathematics, that this sinh of x is equal to what? e to the power of x minus e to the power of minus x over 2. And the cosh, I, th I think this is, maybe I, I have a, a negative or plus, and the cosh is what? e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x divided by 2. We knew also, I will give it to you here, because we knew also that the sign, you can write the sign of x as e to the power of i x, I think plus e to the power of minus i x divided by 2, and you, you can write the cosine, which is trigonometric, e to the power of minus, sorry, e to the power of i x minus e to the power of minus i x over I don't remember, let me, uh, uh, sign is x minus x cube over 3 plus x5 over 5 and cosine is 1 minus x square over 2 plus x4 to the power of 4 and so on. So. Um, and I think the sign, so let, let, I, can, I can make it very easily here. e to the power of i x is just cosine x plus i sine x and e to the power of minus, e to the power of minus i x is just cosine i x which will be negative cosine uh, this is ix, this is ix, ix, and mine, one second, one second, plus sine, this is will be sine, sine ix, no, this is plus and this is minus, and so if you add this, the sine will cancel out with the sine, and you will have cosine ix2, so you have to multiply by 2. Okay, so this one does not have, so this is right, and this is 2i. So the sign has 2i, 2i here, and the negative sign here. I, I, I will not go through what I did. Yes? This is the sign, right? Which one? The sign, which has the 2i. This is, this is the one that has, this is the, the cosine, this one. Okay, yes. This is cosine x, and this is sine x. Thank you. So just remember those, okay? Why, why? Now, if you look at this, this is just the exponential function. Okay, guys? Exponential function. So I can write, I can write the exponential functions as sine and what? Chine and what? Cosine, yes? So I can write uh, e to the power of x, and here is e to the power of minus x over 2, 
this is e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x over 2. Of course, when you try to get what's, what's, shy, what's e to the power of x as a function of shine and e to the power of minus x as a function of cosine, you'll have some constants. You'll have some linear combination. And when you form differential equation, that if you have a solution 1 and a solution 2, and then you have linear combination of solution 1 and solution 2, it is also a solution. Yes? So if we have e to the power of x and e to the power of minus x, we can make some recipe, mix them together, get the rabbit out of the box, and make it shine and cosine. Yes? So if we make it shine and cosine, it's still a solution. But what is the beauty of sine and cosine? The beauty of shine and cosine is at boundaries, those, those shine and cosine and sine and cosine will, will have zeros. At boundaries, they are symmetric and they will have zeros. For example, if I tell you here, I, I need a cosine. So what happened? I can make the, 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 the cosine maximum in the center and zeros, uh, what? In the boundaries. E to the power of, e to the power of, so my condition is I need the flux to be finite at the borders. Yes? Finite means zero at the border or at extrapolated distance here will be zero. I cannot make this, it will be very complicated if I use e to the power of x and e to the power of minus x. You will, you will find it very complicated. So in finite system, use shine and cosine. Beware, shine and cosine if you do not have imaginary. Because when you solve the equation, the roots are, are real or, or imaginary? Complex or, uh, or real? real? Real. So you do not have any imaginary. So whenever you do not have any imaginary, you will end up with what? Shine, shine. and cosine. Yes? If your roots are imaginary, so you will end up having what? Sine, sine and cosine. cosine. Physics, mathematics. Did you understand? So now I have this solution. Now let's ask, let's, let's now try to solve it. Know that all of you are expert in math now after taking the first couple of lectures in this beautiful course and you will be able to solve the, so write the final solution and everybody will figure out what's the final solution. Okay, so now we'll have J at A So, so actually, in the book, he make, he make, I think, in the book, make it like, I think he bought the source, he make this, and instead of minus A to A, I think he make it zero to A. But let me, let me give you this, the solution. If you look at the negative flux, if you look at the negative flux, so positive flux, if you look at the positive x direction, positive current, sorry, positive current is going like this, j plus, what's j minus? Zero. You do not get any neutrons getting from outside the border inside the border. Yes, no neutrons coming from there. And J plus, what do you expect? J plus? J plus at zero. Is the S not over two? What's J plus at A? Very difficult, yes? No. I don't know. Because you have to solve and get the flux, then if you want to get the flux at the boundary at j equal to x equal to a, you have to say the flux is equal to what? j plus one fourth of the flux. This is the formula that we studied last time. One fourth of the flux plus half d multiplied by d phi by dx, all evaluated at x equal to a. Do you understand? So only current at the center will shrink everything and it will be the source. Yes? 
have the source. But at the boundaries, no, there is neutrons going from the source and they are diffusing inside the medium, then they will escape from the medium. Yes? So there is certain current at the boundaries. I don't know, you have to solve it and get the, the current. Now, if you, if you do the boundary condition that the flux at x equal to a plus or minus a should be equal to zero. Okay? The flux at plus or minus a equal to what? Zero. Sometimes, guys, sometimes, if we said neglect the extrapolated distance, so this means that the flux at the exact boundary will equal to what? Zero. If I said that do not neglect the extrapolated distance, so this will be phi at x equal to plus or minus a tilde equal to zero, where a tilde is just a plus d, and d is the extrapolated distance, 0.7 lambda transfer. So in your homework problem or whatever, if it's stated that the extrapolated distance is this and that, you have to calculate what? You have to calculate the flux at extrapolated distance, which is the flux at A plus D. Okay, A plus D or A minus D, minus A minus D, whatever. So now the solution for this will be just very easy formula as all of you will get shocked when you see it. So S naught sinh of A minus X divided by L plus 2D over L cosh A minus L minus X divided by L all divided by 2 multiplied by D divided by L, very simple, 1 to the power of square minus 2d square over l minus 1 all to the power of square and this is multiplied by e to the power of a over l and this is multiplied e to the power of minus a over l i think very easy to memorize yes so yeah very easy so now do you have any question The formula is in the book. By the way, the book does not have those derivations, un, uh, unfortunately. So I got, I worked at those derivations from Lamarche, Durstad, and Henry. So this book, Lewis, he does not, in, in the whole chapter, does not deduce anything. Just get, okay, the source, uh, the, the, uh, non-multiplying medium, infinite with a plane source, here is the flux, okay? A line source, here is the flux. Boyne source, here is the flux. But I am I'm driving this for you so that because if you try to solve the homework problem, you will be stuck because you don't know how to solve those problems. So I have to, and this is one of the drawbacks, by, by the way, for this, this course. Now, again, w when we study the solution for this diffusion equation, for an infinite plane source. So I, I want all of you to focus. If you have infinite source, look at the geometry, okay, of the source. Infinite source and an infinite medium. Look at the geometry of the source. If you say, I have infinite medium, and my source is just a slab with infinite dimension in, in Y and Z, but a finite thickness in X, what we pick for, for coordinate system? We pick what? One dimensional Cartesian coordinate in the x direction. Yes? If my source is line, as we will see right now, line in an infinite medium, what do you think a good geometry that will be symmetrical around the line? Cylindrical. Yes? Cylindrical. If I told you that I have a, a point source and in an infinite medium, what do you think my geometry is? Spherical. So, same. If we look, if, if, so the, the strategy in solving homework problem and in, in exams, 
look for the source, you will be able to, to look for the symmetry to solve the problem. Because the symmetry helped us reducing the effort of solving the problem to have. When you watch the solution in X, and then we say, okay, by mirror, the solution in X, uh, negative X will be the same. So we just make the absolute value. Do you understand? So, yeah, go, go ahead, Muhammad. Yeah, uh, I just a little bit confused about what the difference between this case and the, the, the previous one. It's one uh, infinite and the other... No, the previous case, yeah. both cases are um, infinite, source. infinite source. So the source is just a plane yeah. with infinite dimension in Y, infinite dimension in Z, but in X has finite thickness. Okay, but this plane source for the first problem was was inserted in the middle of infinite medium. Uh -huh. So the medium is like, let's assume that we will we will be going to the desert and we will put this source in the desert. Okay. So the desert should be con considered I infinite. So it is an infinite source in in the desert. But of course, this will go infinity here, infinity here, infinity here, infinity here, and in one dimension will will be. The second problem that we solve here, this is an infinite source in a finite one-dimensional medium. So the medium goes to infinity, but in the, di in the direction of the source, it's finite. So it's like infinite slab. So if you can please hold this one. Then my, my problem now will go like this x equal to 0, x equal to a, x equal to negative a, and I have goes to infinity from here and goes to infinity from here, but it's finite from negative a to a in the x direction. So this is the solution. For the first one, when it is, when it is infinite, we big dub x axis and we big dub yeah. the source term, source condition, and we said flux goes to 0 at infinity. Second the case, we said, okay, same source condition will be exactly the same, does not change. But the only difference now is the, at the finite here, because this is a finite, if I say the flux at x equal to a goes <coughs> to zero, if you will pick up the e to the power of ax and e to the power of minus ax, you will be able to solve it. But the problem is you will have to do lots of mathematical tricks to reach to the sine and cosine y. Let's assume that... I solve this as this, a e to the power of x over l plus b e to the power of minus x over l. Now, when I apply phi at x equal to a, get to zero. Now, substitute zero equal to a e to the power of x equal to a, so a over l plus b e to the power of minus a over l. The flux at x equal to negative a equal to zero. Now zero equal to a e to the power of minus a l plus b e to the power of plus a l. Yes? yes. Now what you will do, want to do? I will show you the trick. You will get one of those in terms of the other. So you will say a equal to b e to the power of a over l divided by e to the power of minus a over l. You will take A, substitute here, and this will give you what? This will give you what? Zero equal to A is what? B e to the power of A over L, e to the power of minus A over L, <coughs> multiplied by e to the power of what? a over l plus b e to the power of minus a over l. So what's b? Zero equal to b e to the power of two a over l plus e to the power of so minus two a over l multiplied by yes? What's this? Two cinch two a over l. Yes? Yeah. And when you multiply it, when you get this, 
So when, when you get it upstairs, it will be, let's say, e to the power of minus 2a over l. So b is just equal to e to the power of 2 over l divided by 2 sinh of 2a over l. You go back and return here, substitute with this, and get the value of what? a, and then substitute in the equation, then you will get this very complicated term here, see? Sinh a, blah, 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 okay? And a minus x over l, because when you will substitute with a and b in the equation for the flux, now the equation has what? x and x. But a and b, a and b has what? a over l. So you will have a minus x over l and minus a minus x over l. So this is the complication, you know? So instead of just telling you to solve e to the power of x and e to the power of minus x, I told you from the beginning, take it sensh and cosh, and then substitute at the borders, and you will get this nice formula. Instead of just getting this and playing with the mathematics that all of you know, very tedious, and then get the shape. Okay, thank you guys. Do you have any questions? Nothing?